Hello, I'm Enigmas. Let's, uh, let's get some coding done, yeah? Anyways, so, man, I've been, I've been exploring this bevy thing now for a moment. And, uh, wow, does bevy seem cool. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot going on here in the documentation. But, uh, they've got some, they've got some news. Let's see. Hmm. I guess yeah, that's a that's a matching squares game written by someone. That's pretty cool. Hello, Wolfie. They've um. Looks like uh, a lot of the other ECS engines out there, like Legion, Specs, etc. I guess right. I guess Hex originally maybe, which is a. Uh, which Bevy has forked off of H E C S or Hex, I guess. I don't know. And uh it seems like everyone was using Rayon for almost all of these tasks, all of their multi threaded throughput tasks. And it's nice because it's got a nice API. But apparently it's not nice on the CPU. So I'm really curious again about exploring uh Bevy's uh ECS. So we tried hooking it up, I think, uh, yeah, last time to, uh, like, outside of the Bevy game engine. Which, uh, eh, you know, I didn't want to put the work in, really, to, to figure out how to make that happen. So we didn't. And that's fine. We were able to get Legion going. And, uh, you know, we had a fun little console experiment. We were able to move a little uh, ant sign around. You know. I kept thinking about things more and more, and it was like, you know, I, I really want to, if I could get on the ground floor of something as cool as Bevy seems to be, and wow, let's, maybe, maybe that's what we should be doing. So, so yeah, please give this guy all sorts of support. I guess Carter Anderson, right? He's got, he's got his GitHub, he's got some tweeters there, he's got some YouTubes. I don't think he's got any recent YouTube videos. It's okay. But uh, yeah, he seems to be really hard at work on this bevy thing. I think if we go to what? Crates somewhere? So there's there's the GitHub. Actually I think I prefer to yeah, let's get a new tab going for the GitHubs. Alright, and so yeah, when we go to check out the GitHub. You know, he's like, yeah, our bevy's a refreshing and good thing, and et cetera, et cetera, and why did I really want to come here for the crates? The crates I owe. Check this out. I mean, like, last updated three days ago? That's pretty good. Pretty good. I think, I recall there being, like, a versions. Ah, here we go. Show the, show the versions. So I guess the first version was 001 back in January. But look at all this... Activity since August. I mean, he must have laid down quite the groundwork here in these past and the seven months from uh, January 18th to August 10th and then wow, just crunching on this thing like a boss So yeah, way to go Carter And I've been I've been looking at some of the some of the things that he has done And wow, does it seem like you know, he's making a lot of choices that I think I would have made, at least tech stack wise, given what's, you know, kind of state of the art in Rust uh, game, the Rust game library space at this moment. He's using WGPU RS, which I've mentioned on stream before. Uh, I haven't, I hadn't heard of Glam RS. I haven't quite looked into the competing math libraries yet, but you know, this guy seems fun, right? Got some, uh, as opposed to in algebra, I guess he chose to use this. And this seems specifically for games and stuff, which is good. Whereas it appears that, like, in algebra, right, it seems much more general purpose, which general purpose is good. I mean, they do have recipes for computer graphics, projections, and stuff, and everything else. Uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything bad about in algebra. I don't know anything about it. I haven't tried using it too, too much. I don't know what the pros and cons are. 
but it appears that Carter opted for glam rather than in algebra. Uh, so we'll see, see how that goes. Uh, let's see, back to the bevy stuff, right? He uses win it. Check this out. Remember how I was talking about some uh, earlier stream, my little rant about like, no, really, games only should care about the physical pixels. There's no such thing as a logical pixel to a game. There's no such thing as a logical pixel to a user when they select a size for a window to be. There's no such thing as a logical pixel to something like OBS, which records screens at the physical pixels that they really occupy. So the whole idea of a logical pixel for a game is very silly. But, check this out. So he uses Winnet. Let's go ahead and let's see how he uses Winnet. Am I in the wrong place? Yeah, I think I need to go crates. Crates, here we go. We're gonna go to the bevy window. Under source. I think that, uh, let's see here. Let's look for a size. This may not be in here. So this right here is all, all about the window descriptor. Here are some defaults and stuff. Oh, those are actually quite sensible defaults. I didn't even uh, look to see what those were before just overriding them with my own and earlier tests that I was playing with. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, so, so far, a lot of stuff in here I am just very pleased with. As seem like the types of things that I might have done. Come on. I know, I know when it's in here somewhere. Um, I'm under Bevy Window. That's not where we need to be, I don't think. I think we actually need to be under Bevy Win It find what it is that I am looking for. So here is Winit Windows. Let's try looking for size here. All right. And here we are. So when it looks like when we actually go to make a windowed, right, because we're doing a match on window mode here, right? So there's like a borderless full screen, full screen, right? Like, I guess that's like actual exclusive mode full screen, as opposed to just like a borderless window that occupies 100% of your desktop space. Uh, and then we've got this Winit Window Builder with inner size. Right? And check it out. He uses the physical size. That's not even, that's not even configurable. I mean... I can see that, I, you know, yeah, if you're, if you're writing something like a Godot editor, maybe you should support, you know, UI scaling. You know, maybe you should, you know, beef the things up so that your fonts and stuff are readable on the high-res monitors. I get it. I understand why UI scaling exists. But for most game projects, like, no, really, this is, this is the default. This is what it should be. Anyways, so, on to that. What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, we're going to check out some bevy. We're going to see about adding it, from our, adding it to our project. I guess that means uh, we might want to rip out Legion, I guess. I don't know. So right now, I think we've been playing around in the master branch of our Git repo. Yep, on branch master. Uh, we are up to date with origin master. Well. Yes, so I think what we're going to do then is we're going to say git checkout minus b, not that you can see, but you know, lo siento. Uh, let's see here. What are we going to do? We're going to call this, you know, the bevy, right? The bevy branch. Because we're going to try to integrate bevy. And if things go well, then this basically becomes the new master, yeah? Or we're just basically going to, yep, we switch to the new branch bevy. So uh, should be able to come in here. Let's see, what do you what do you got? What do you know? In structure. Got any git stuff? I know you got some VCS. All right, so open for a way to see like, oh yes, we really are in that branch now. 
go in here. <laughs> uh, so we got. I don't know. I always, I always just use command line when doing a lot of get stuff. All right, so on branch bevy, nothing to commit. Working tree clean. All right, good to go. Wow, let's get some music playing. I'm gonna head over to Pretzel Rocks because uh, I, I love how they attribute the artists in my chat windows. Let's, uh, yeah, play in browser. You know who I am. I believe it should have started up. Yeah, all right. I can barely. I guess it was starting off quiet. I even I can barely hear it. <laughs> so don't worry about it if you can't hear it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. So yeah. Let's um. See, so we got some bevy stuff. We're gonna want some bevy documentation, maybe. Maybe. All right. So let's uh yeah let's come back here. Let's just let's just keep going through with some let's go through some examples and things. Right. Uh. Yeah. Let's um. Uh, check something out real quick over here. Oh, so, play bevy. All right. Yes. Yes. All right, I I just copy paste this, so we don't have to worry about figuring that out. All right, so we're gonna come over here to our cargo tunnel. Boom. I kind of want these things to be at the top, the ones with the more complicated signatures. Like other than that, we want things to be kind of a QRS. Okay. Well, let's keep things alphabetical. Keep things nice and organized. Yeah. Let's try to get some music going. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Oh, these trailing ones don't need to be organized. That's fine. All right. Yeah, so for fun, I added in the uh, Vorbis codec to the uh, audio capabilities of Bevy, which is, uh, you know, Probably one of the best codecs out there in terms of, uh, you know, from what I understand, maintaining musical quality while uh, helping to compress the music, right, into uh, reasonable sizes. All right. Let's, um... Whew, let's take a look. Alright, so I think we're ripping out Legion, right? I think that's, that's, that's the idea. We're gonna rip out the Legion. We don't need that no more. Which means coming into our main, I guess, right? Now we have to be like, ooh, yeah, we're not, we're not using, we're not using the Legion anymore. Sorry, we'll go back. And, uh, yeah, this right here is still fine for now. Let's see. This is still fine. We're basically just trying to read in Bob, right? Yep, and to here, and he looks good. See, I don't know that we need to keep this open as like an example to ourselves of how to make a bomb. Because it's like, yeah, it's not that hard. You just fill in the, you just fill in the attributes, right? Good to go. Yeah, that's that's what that is. All right, cool. Let's get rid of that guy. So we're still so we're playing around with some serialization here. I think this is where what we just we just serialize Bob, we print him out. That's fine and good. Ah, and here is. I think we're just gonna get rid of the Legion playground entirely. Uh, we don't need right because the idea then is to go with uh, a bevy playground, right? Let's see, how, how are we... Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Alright, so let's, uh, yeah. Let's just get rid of this. Alright, yeah, Pretzel Rocks. Now playing the stuff. What are we doing? Uh, what are we playing? Indigo by Harris Heller. Alright, so yeah. We're gonna replace that with the Bevy Playground. Now, in my experimentations last night, I have I discovered some things. 
But earlier I was complaining a little bit maybe about the hashing speed of the default uh, hasher. Uh, is very quiet, so you would prefer it slightly louder, is what I'm hearing. Alright, sure. I cranked it about five decibels, how's that? So, the song right now is quiet too, I think. You have to give it a moment. Alright, so it's audible now, I guess, is what we're saying. Alright, that's fun. So, yeah, so let's, um, for now, we're just gonna, we're gonna... We're just gonna put these guys in there. So that way it stops warning us about the, uh, or not using these, uh, not using these variables. Alright, we're gonna start up with some Bevy Playground, yeah? So, what do we need for that? Let's, uh, let's have fun. We're gonna come here into the learn section, I guess. Bevy book. And apps. Alright, cool. See? Simple, right? App, build, run. Let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm just gonna go through some of the, some of the basics. We could probably... See, I guess we don't need these systems anymore either. We might want to comment these out because they were legion systems. And I don't think that it will compile with those uh, declarations still there. Yeah, so let's get rid of that. And we're not actually terribly interested in these things continuing to run to tell us that it works. There we go. Get those guys out of there. Alright, what are we doing? Alright. Let's, um... Yeah, let's put that trailing comma in there. Just condense some things a little bit. Alright. Guessing that's another, uh, yep. Alright. Sweet. So, now we can go, what, use Bevy. Prelude. Alright, and star. Some abilities and RPGs and stuff. Do we even, are we still using those? Do I comment that out? I think everything's commented out right now, so yeah, we should probably just... Alright. Let's go ahead and just comment out all of the stuff. Yes. Alright. Now what, we've got this pub model, that's still good, right? Pub mod model. Oh, it looks like we do still need this dine error. So, uh, eh. all right, we'll keep the standard in there. All right, imports optimize. Looking good. And by optimize, I think it just means organize, but that's okay. Let's see. Now what? Time to play. App. Oops. Two of these would be good. Build. Dot. Run. There we go. Let's go ahead and throw this guy on an Zenx line. As we'll be adding to it there. And we'll compile. So how you guys doing tonight? This is Wednesday, hump day. Two more days left. <laughs> Man. Yep, almost the weekend. Kind of.
Yeah, so Bevy seems pretty neat and interesting. Yeah. Definitely seems on the outset that, like, you know, you get some pretty quick wins out of it. And it also seems so far to be highly plug and play. Yeah, take what you want out of it. That sort of a thing. Yes, we don't need, we're not using certain hat. We're not using the standard library. Except for where we are. We're not going to worry about that for now. Yeah. All right. We can, all right, we can get rid of it. Mostly just want the error one. All right, sweet. There we go. Let's run it. See what we get. I think it ran, and uh, nothing happened. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's probably that's probably as desired, right? Nice and simple, right? Yes. In your project folder. You will notice that nothing happens. This is because we haven't told our app to do anything yet. Apps are just empty shells capable of running our application logic. Let's add some logic to our app using the Bevy ECS. All right, here we go. So components are normal structs. This is good. Systems are normal functions. This is good. And again, it seems like they've got sort of like this dependency injection idea I'm used to from the enterprise world in terms of like, you know, you're, you write a thing, you declare what you need, and our dependency injection stuff will get you what, yeah, what you've declared that you've needed up here. And then you just run with it. I was like, yeah, sweet. Dependency injection. Let's do it. Uh, let's see. Let's see how this works in practice. Um, all right. There's a first system. We could do all that. Sure, right? Why not? And uh, let's say hello. Oops. There we go. So it looks like so in Legion we had to, you know, mark the system with a macro. Uh, here we're just gonna say hello. And we are going to do a print one for a hello world. Hello, Bevy. Let's do that. Now, all we have to do is come in here, right, and say add system, right? What system are we adding? We're adding the hello system. We can't just do that. No, we have to say hello system hello dot system we're gonna call that function and that looks good let's compile yep IntelliJ takes a moment with these it seems to catch up to the idea that like oh no it was good and look we added a system and it ran the system and then it was done because it had nothing else to do <laughs> so there we go a little hello world system up with Bevy pretty quick yeah, pretty nice and easy. So yeah, so uh, you know we could we could go through the rest of uh, this, but why, right? We want to integrate our stuff with it. That's kind of the idea, I think, right? So uh, yeah, so like, look, you have a struct person and a struct name string, and like you could add them. Like, all right. So in this right here, I guess he's showing like a startup system. I think this is the main point of this, right? As you can say, oh yes, I have this startup system called Add People. I would like you to start up with it. Well, what does the startup system Add People do? Spawn some people. Cool. Right? And so that's kind of, that's fun and good. Let's see here. So yeah, he's still adding the Hello World system. Ooh, now, he's, now we're going to do the Greet People system, right? Where I guess he takes in, again, almost like a dependency injection, a person and a name. So we're going to find entities that have both you know, a person component and a name component, and uh, we're going to print out their name. So I was like, alright, sounds cool. A little... yes, okay, I know why, because this is basically a named tuple. That's how it was defined up here. Hence the dot zero here. All right, excellent. 
and then register with the app. Which means what? Yes, we're, it means we take reach people, and we add the system. Alright, and then he will greet the people. Very good. But yeah, so, so far, you know, very samey, the same, you know, in terms of the entity component system stuff, right? There are entities, they have a bunch of components, you can query for entities by the components that they have, and then uh, you write systems that take them in and use them. So that is good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we can write our own plugins, we can do a bunch of other stuff. Let's, uh, let's just get started, man. Let's get started with doing our own stuff. Alright. So, what does that mean? What do we, what do we want to do? I don't know. So we've got... We've got this app. Do stuff with. Double check some... Food I had written elsewhere. Alright. Because, uh... Kind of blanking on what I did. Did it and stuff. Let's just do it. Um. Yeah. Here we go. And click Sweet. All right. Yeah. Let's take a look. All right, so yeah, so we were, okay, so we were, we were having fun with that, etc. Yeah, let's just get started with, I don't know, I want to see a window. Don't you guys want to see a window? Let's see a window. Let's get into the fun stuff. All right, let's go ahead and add a resource. What are we adding? You're adding a window descriptor. All right, cool. So, title. Talk. Ellipse road trip dot into width nineteen twenty height is what ten eighty because those things make sense to do these. Go ahead and make it true, I guess. I'm not sure. Resizable. False. And maybe we could make it true later. It's one of those things where, like, you really want to make sure that your game is up for being resized. If you're going to allow your window to be resized. So we've got a window mode and window then we can hit up the uh what default default there we go so anything that i did not specify in here will just default to the defaults now one thing i'm curious about can i change the position that we launch at. I don't know. Hmm, did we not do everything? This one's hidden. Non-exhaustive. This is a manual implementation of the non-exhaustive pattern, essentially made to allow default default. I see. Well, it looks like we, we put everything in there. <laughs> Except for this non-exhaustive thing. Kinda weird. It's like, alright. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not super happy that like I can't just tell you what position I'd like it to spawn at. But you know, that's fine, I guess. Um So it may be possible to basically get a startup system that takes a window, right, as a, as something, and, and play with that. I guess we'll, we'll see, right? 
there's a wide variety of things to, things to do and mess with. So let's check it out. Yeah. All right, the audio's audio levels are good. All right. So yeah, let's go ahead now. We can add a resource. I want to add the clear color. Color RGB. What is this? Zero. 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 All right. Three of those looking good. Add some default. Plugins. This will provide us with a wide variety of default plugins, helping out our windows and stuff. We could, uh, what can we do? Yeah. Alright. So we could play around with some startup systems, we could play around with some other systems, right? Let's, uh, let's see what we've got for now. Let's see if it compiles, even. We can give that a run pretty soon. Face reminds me of someone. Yeah, I get that sometimes. All right. Hey, look at that. We launched ourselves a window. Nice little window here for us to play with. It is uh, it is using a clear color that we specified. For fun, right? We could like what? Uh, two, two, and eight. Save back. Nah. All right. Shift 10. There we go. Look at that. That's a pretty fun color. I think that's the one from the orig original tutorial on making a window in Bevy that we went through. Let's see. I have not heard of Chin Chilla Day. No, I have not. Oh, yeah? Man, yeah, lots of lots of Daves. Lot. <laughs> That's funny considering my name is Dave. Lots of, lots of us look alike Daves running around, <laughs> yeah, programming and you know getting stuff done. I guess, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's pretty funny. So, but we do have a cool window. <laughs> Yeah, lots of programmer Dave's. That's fine. I think what we're what were we gonna do? I wanted to do some sort of like a plug-in thing. I think yeah, yeah. So now now we're gonna have fun. We're gonna play around with Bevy's plug-in system a little bit. Let's uh, put it down there for below them. And we can say what uh, pub. So does he get mad at us about things? We can say pub struct art plugin. There we go. Let's build ourselves a plugin. So this shirt here is going to take a reference to self. What else we got? App. Oops. Pull in. What else we got? Ant. Mute. App. So a mutable reference to app builder. All right. Let's go ahead, basically, and I think we're, yeah, we're just gonna take this stuff that we already did here, and we're gonna load it up, just for fun, right? This will be part of our plugin. And right now, we currently have our own sort of data loader logic, logic right? Because we're, we're just collecting stuff out of our ROM files that, we've, that we already made earlier, right? So we've got, we've got all these ROM files, and uh, we've, we've already written serializers for them. We're using SERD for serialization. I'm not sure what Bevy uses by default, but for now it's like, yeah, let's just stick with what we got. Uh, hopefully a top-down role-playing game, sort of turn-based combat sort of a thing, uh, set in a modern world with, uh, you know, after a cataclysmic event. Uh, I think that the event that I'm looking at is probably a CME. 
are a uh, coronal mass ejection from the sun bigger than the Carrington event that uh, wipes out much of the world's electronics and ability to produce electricity. So, the game will take place a couple years after that. And, uh, you know, that'll be like a... You know, people are still in the thick of things and trying to survive the, you know, the cataclysmic stuff that just happened. But, you know... But the some time has passed, so like they've they've got to have worked something out. So we're just kind of playing around. I've got some Savage World stuff in here, just kind of as a temporary maybe sort of thing. You know, I haven't talked with Shane about like you know officially licensing it. Uh, if I need to, I could just make it a fan license and you know make it a free game. I don't know. It's uh this will be my first game. I am a I guess I'm more of an enterprise developer by trade. And I am, uh, I'm trying to, yeah, you know, I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to figure stuff out. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that the idea, idea had, uh, some potential, I'm hoping. I ran it by a few other folks, and in fact, you know, I bring up Savage Worlds as the tabletop role-playing game that I'm bringing assets in from. Because, you know, the idea spawned from, like, well, I had the idea, and I was like, hey guys, Friday Night Crew, let's... Let's play a tabletop role-playing game with this. Let's make it happen. So we've had a few sessions of it now, and I think things have been going along really well. And uh, I think everyone's having fun, which is uh, the most important thing. But yeah, so you know, this is the very beginning stages of the project where I'm, I'm learning Rust. I'm, I'm learning the libraries that are out there for Rust. Uh, you know, I did a little bit of data modeling already here with uh, learning about Rust enums. Let's see. There we go. Now, figuring out Rust enums, Rust types, Rust libraries. Trying to figure out how to do all the Rust things. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and make, make this guy go, right? So what we've got here? Hash map import. Looks like Bevy has its own hash map. That sounds interesting. Play with that. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, lots of borrow checker stuff, lots of safety stuff, etc. It's definitely different than languages I'm used to. I think I'm a, yeah, I'm a Scala, Java sort of programmer by trade. Much preferring Scala to Java. But, uh, you know, it's all about getting used to things and, and figuring out the new ecosystems. Uh, you know, I haven't been liking a lot of the moves that Oracle's been making with the JVM. So to me, it's like, eh, seems kind of like that's not doing well. But I don't know, I could be wrong, right? We're just trying to figure some stuff out. Alright, so I just kind of went through the little errors I was getting, and I imported our data model into main. Let's see, hard to like something more than Java. Oh, it's not hard to like something more than Java. Um, you know... So yeah, I haven't actually done Java language proper as... Well, I've been avoiding as much as I can for the past decade or so, favoring Scala. But before that, I was a Java programmer for a good decade. And yeah, I got, I got a lot of stuff done with it. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain about those days too much. They, they put, uh, you know, they paid the bills. Yeah. You know, Java paid lots of bills for me. Alright, let's, uh, let's for fun, let's, uh, like, what did I just do? There, I'm getting some errors here, right? As, a, uh, I'm thinking it's, it's not liking the hash map, but that's fine, I expected that. Because I wanted to take a look at this hash map. And there's something weird, well, it's not weird, I guess. Rust standard library made a decision to go with a more robust uh, sort of a hashing algorithm, uh, right? So, because it's more robust and less prone to e being easily attacked, it's also kind of slow. So, in the game development world, they're like, oh, wow, this, this hash map is in Rust is slow, what do we do? Well, hence these sorts of hashers here. And it looks like Bevy has provided for us a hash map, who's like a hash map type guy here, who uses the random state from this a hash library, 
right? So this algorithm is intended to be a high performance, hardware specific. Hmm, we're slightly concerned about that, but we'll see, right? Uh, key keyed hash function. So it, it claims it's you know DOS resistant alternative or a fast equivalent to SIP hash. Either way, so I'm hoping that you know because lots of collisions and hash maps, that's not good. Yeah, you, know, you want to be able to put in all the keys that you'd want to without them competing, you know, for space over there, right? You also want them to perform well. I've heard of people getting 30% performance gains from their application by replacing the hasher function in their hash maps. So it's like, you know, it's not even a little thing. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I get told that a lot by people from the north, typically. Um, but, uh, I don't know. And by north, I guess, like, whenever I go to Minnesota, <laughs> they, they say that. But I don't know, hearing my own voice and my own recordings, uh, it's like, wow, I, I did not know that I sounded like that. Uh, to be fair, I will change my voice frequently. Yes, of course Minnesota would think that I have an interesting accent. <laughs> Yeah, my relatives, I have got some relatives from up there, and so occasionally I visit, and all the Minnesotans are like, Oh, you're from down south! It's like, you know, most people are down south from where you guys are at, right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, and then I go to listen to recordings of myself, and it's like, wow, I had no idea I sounded like that. No wonder people sometimes have a hard time understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's just... I don't know. I'm trying to work on it. I'm trying to work on... I don't know. My enunciations. I'm trying to work on exhaling more through uh, mouth than nose, I think. Uh, I'll, but also I will just do accents for fun. You know, that, that sort of thing. Uh, at least, you know, I try to. Who knows? <laughs> Especially when you realize you don't quite sound like what you thought you did. Alright, alright, alright. What am I doing here? Alright, so uh, yeah, we were loading up some data models. This hasher is different than this guy because this is using a different... Yeah, he's using a different random state. Solution Zen is to VAT, is to go into the data here. And we're going to get rid of this guy in favor of the bevy typed hasher, right? So I should just be able to come in here, alt enter from IntelliJ, choose the bevy hasher. All right, that's gonna get us the, the higher performing hash map for us to play with. All right, so... Oh, of course, because that's not how that works. All right, so what? Impel Art Plugin. Yep. <laughs> In fact, I need to Impel Plugin for Art Plugin. There we go. Yeah, just fine and understandable. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've been with me for a couple decades, Wolfie. So. No, not that long. No. Not too far away, though. <laughs> yeah. Feel your pronunciations? Yeah, probably. Probably. Alright. Alright, so... Well, what do we got here? Uh, we got some abilities, kinds, skills, arcane backgrounds... Yeah, that's all happy now because I did the right things. Good. <laughs> Let's see if I can't just uncover some more errors, because I'm sure there are. What are you mad about? Oh, right, because I changed where this is. We no longer have that result return type fall back on, so we're just going to unwrap it for now, and we can deal with proper error handling later. We're just trying to get a project up the ground, get things kind of working. We're not looking for robustness yet. All right, so you make things work, and you make them, what? Work fast and then well and stuff like that, right? That sort of thing. Yeah, I'm not too worried that 
We're not using an app yet. Just more interested in whether or not our hash map is happy. So, oh, this, this guy here, he also has a hash map. I think we want to replace that as well. Right? Yes. Who has the hash map? Who has the hash map? All right. Let's, uh, yes, let's go ahead, bring that out there. Approved hash or hash maps. Let's do it. So, yep, that's part of our dude stats. We'll change that around. Make sure everything's still good to go. Alright, we may start playing around with our app, I think. Oh. Alright, finished. Now, oh, we've got this app. Let's go ahead then and add a resource. Right? Uh. Ooh, our bills, our abilities. Uh, add the source. What are we doing? Pines. Yeah. Oh, that's. I was looking at a different thing. That's fine. Let's just spell it out then. Yeah, understandable. Yep, all right, cool. So, add resource. Skills. All right. So there, yeah, should have added a bunch of resources. Looks good. Yeah, we're not returning anything, so I probably need a semicolon there. All right. There we go. Sweet. So that should load in all of our data from all of our files. And, uh, you know, we could print it all out, or we could just, uh, you know, take a cop out here and just be like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> Alright, because if it makes it to the end and says it loaded it, then everything must be good. Uh, if, if there is a problem, these unwraps, I think, should cause the program to panic, which will end it. Which is fine for right now, because we're in, you know, dev mode. Yeah. Not robust at all. So, hey, yeah, well, right. So, yeah. So we can bring, we can bring, let's bring, let's bring Bob back for fun, all right? Let's, let's go ahead and deserialize him. One thing I disliked about Rust is that if you ever even try to access a union, you need to wrap it with an unsafe block. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have too, too much experience with it yet for as far as, like, access, attempting to access union types. But, uh, mostly I just try to, like, open up windows and draw triangles. <laughs> uh, yeah, at the day job I'm still mostly just, you know, Scala land. I'm doing some Scala JS. You know, that sort of a thing. For fun, you know, play framework. You know, for writing a lot of web services and the like. I'm also interested in exploring, um, what is it? Svelte. Seems like a fun JavaScripty thing for doing UIs and whatnot. And it's a companion project, Sapper. So that, uh, that seems fun. Let's see. Yeah, pretty config. What is this? Two string pretty, right. Go ahead and import that. You know where that's from. That's from Ron. Uh, Svelte. Let's see. Where um, goes that my do? Yeah. Svelte. Yeah, it looks like I've already got it. Just boom. I just found it. You know what it is? Yeah, cybernetically enhanced web apps and stuff. So basically, uh, yeah, you compile it. It's good to go. Um, right. It's a. Uh, it's kind of like so. So Rust and you know Vue.js. I'm oh, sorry, not Rust, but uh, what React, React.js, Vue.js, uh, Ang Angular, right? They they have they they bring their whole environment in with them, kind of into the runtime, right? Svelte is a similar sort of component-based uh, architecture, but from what I understand, you compile it at build time with highly efficient JavaScript that doesn't have a whole lot of that dependency stuff 
kind of bundled with it. And, uh, and Sapper is a super interesting project where uh, it tries to do a lot of like a, com a combination, it seems like, of server-side rendering, right, with the one-page web app things together uh, to truly make uh, you know, things as good and efficient as they can be, I guess, perhaps for, for SEO, right, as and everything else. And so it's just a really, really interesting set of projects by this fellow. I forget his name. I've seen a few of his videos. Uh, it's like Eric or Rick or somebody. I forget. Could be wrong. Let's see. Oh, or who or to? Uh, yeah, Rick. Rick. Uh, Rich. Rich Harris. Yeah, I've, I've seen some interesting talks from this fellow. He's a. Uh, he's pretty cool. Uh, the one page thing. Uh. Right, so I'm in. I, so I live in the world of kind of application development rather than say website development. And so, for me, it's more been about like you know, I really just want to have lots of tiny JSON messages go back and forth from the server, rather than continuously like bringing back all sorts of static things. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm I, I do at work is about metrics. It's about uh, search. I think you know. I guess, like like a Google sort of thing. I guess I've, I've done that. I've done a wide variety of, of things, but yeah, you know, they're they're applications, not not so much as websites. They just run on the web because it's a long time ago. People have gotten tired of downloading and installing stuff. <laughs> is basically what that is. So, so yeah, but uh, but but this guy, you know, he'll do the server side rendering as well as the single page like web app stuff, which is you know. Really, really interesting sort of tech that uh, he's got going there. Anyways, was, what, what was I up to? So I think we, we can, yeah, I think that this compiles. Didn't I just compile it? Maybe I do need to uh, add in the fast compiling from Bevy. Woo! There we go. All right, so we still got our window there. And we're reprinting out Okay, we, so we print out Bob again for fun. And we also should see somewhere in here... Nope, because I didn't add it, I don't think. All right, cool. So we made this cool art plugin. We should probably tell our application about it. <laughs> Let's see, shouldn't the type inference cover those cases? Type inference. I'm not sure I know I'm following. Type inference cover which cases? Oh, oh, you're ta- oh, yes, it- it does cover it. I absolutely can get rid of it. But then IntelliJ annoys me by putting it there anyways. <laughs> so, it's like, I feel like there's no harm in being explicit. I definitely- so I- yeah, I could get rid of it, and I could go into IntelliJ, and I could turn this- I could turn this type hinting off. Basically, and it'd be much less annoying. Uh, but, but yeah. So I don't know. I just so it's more of a style thing, I guess. Yeah, I'm just I'm just throwing them in there to be like, yes, this is this is this is what it is. This is what I wanted. You know, just sort of a thing. I don't know. I like I said, I, I could get rid of the IntelliJ type hands, and I could I could shorten this a lot. It definitely does not need to be there. Type inferencing would definitely take care of it. Uh. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. I can turn it off. It's not hurting me. It's not hurting anything right now. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, as I put more time into Rust and uh, really trying to get to understand it, stuff. I'll, I'll probably be more than happy to just like turn a lot of the stuff off and get rid of a lot of the stuff. But uh, you know, we're we're we're, we're you know we're learning new tech, right? So 
you know, it doesn't hurt to be explicit when you're learning new things. All right, so yeah, so we got a screen, we printed out uh, Bob Chansey, so he's still correctly deserializing from the ROM file that we put him into. Uh, what else do we have? We have... Um, yeah, yeah, we wanted to... Let's, let's, let's show something pretty. Yeah? Yeah, let's show something pretty. All right, I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to copy some stuff over that I was playing around with last night. From what I understand, the producer of this artwork doesn't mind you using his his stuff. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So, doop, doop, doop. what do we got here? Play. Maybe. Yes. I'm gonna bring that over just here. Just here. All right, there we go. All right, let's bring let's bring uh, Marissa into view here. So we've got ourselves a cool little window. Uh, there ain't nothing going on right now. So let's, for a quick win, display some artwork. Let's see how well. Uh, let's see how easy it is to do that with uh, Bevy. Do not like that RGB format with the flips. Well, luckily there are multiple RGBs to pick from. Uh, let's see, these two happen to be floats, but I recall there being another set of them. There we go, RGB U8. So you could use the U8 values, you could use a bunch of different things, right? I think, what is this one? Here's the hex one, so you can throw in a hex. Yep, I just, uh, I just picked one and went with it. Uh, I'm just, you know, we're just trying to get to the color black anyway, right? In fact, I think if I really wanted to... Yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Add plugins, supplied zero arguments. No! Alright, art. Plugin! There we go. I'm a little distracted here. Ah, so in any, so in a lot of these uh, hardware accelerated graphical applications, you know, for decades now, because I, I recall, I've never worked with DirectX per se, but I've played around with OpenGL before. And the same thing has, you know, remained true even in Vulkan today, which is the, kind of the much more modern uh, API for doing, you know, hardware accelerated graphics. And so, you know, at the beginning of every frame, you clear it. You clear it to a color. There are also, there, and that's just the color buffer. Uh, there, are, there are a wide variety of buffers in in this sort of programming. There's the color buffer, the depth buffer, there are stencil buffers. All right, so there, there are a number of buffers, and you clear them, and then you draw to them. Yes, this is for this is for graphical programming, and so a uh, strange way to define it. Well, we're using the Bevy engine, which has. Um, what is the control flow like? Well, he's using a pattern, I guess, called ECS, which is about entities, components, and systems. And I guess, you know, you could throw resources in there too, which seems to provide a mechanism of dependency injection, right? So, and we're, we're about to see that soon as I come up with uh, systems, uh, Right, because we're about to come up with an ECS system for it. So I think, yeah, so we added in our art plugin. And now we're gonna we're gonna get a picture, a pretty picture to show up. Alright. So, you know, when I was uh playing around with Vulcan, this would it would take me over a thousand lines of code, I think, to render a triangle. And that was like with a, just about any language I tried it with, right? Um for instance, yeah, yeah, whether it was like C, C++, you know, Java, trying to get Java to work with that, Scala, any of the, uh, else, yes, even, even Rust Vulkan examples, they, they can be pretty, they can be pretty hefty. I'm um, just used to defining a loop myself, runs game calculations or whatever. Yes, Bevy, Bevy has defined the loop for us. 
Uh, so, which was an annoyance when I was trying to just use their ECS uh, without trying to use the whole engine. Uh, there seems like a lot of things are tied in with this app. And so as a part of the default plugins that we get here, uh, that, you know, and this is what's launching the window. So as a part, so we don't have to use the default plugins, right? It's just like, it's, it's quick, it's easy. It's like, I'm getting my project started. I just want a window to pop up, please, right? That sort of a thing. And so it's like, yeah, so, we're, you know, he's going to register uh, type registry plugins, core plugins, transform plugins, diagnostic plugin. And it's like one of those things we might not want to have in there in the, like, run in the uh, production version, right? Input plugins, window plugins. And so all I have to do is not add the default plugins, and then I can customize the list, right? With my own set of default plugins. Uh, yeah. You know. So what do we got here? Guess various features. Bevy render, Bevy sprite, Bevy PBR. And I think that I have all of these features in here by default because I did not in my Bevy here tell it to exclude the default features. So, so yeah, so this is, uh, so Bevy's meant to be a game engine. They are working on an editor. Yeah, they, I guess they want to become like the Godot for Rust. You know, as opposed to having their, as opposed to GD script or something, right? Uh, they seem like they want to have scene, they want to have scene files that you load. It's supposed to be very data oriented. Sort of a thing. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm trying to do an RPG, there's gonna be a lot of data. Right? And that's before we even talk about, you know, the normal, you know, game data of all of the models and art assets and, the, you know, the, you know, the textures and the everything. So, just playing around. Alright. Yes. Uh, so I've, yeah, I, I don't know anything about the Chinchilla Duke. Maybe I'll look him up. <laughs> See if I can't find him. Uh, I've played around with Godot. Godot is fun. I like Godot because it runs really well on my Linux desktop. Uh, I've tried playing around with Unreal, and it was a pain to get working and to keep it working on my Linux desktop. So... And then Unity seems to, like, really hide how to even get it working on Linux. I, I've heard of people using it on Linux, but it was like... It didn't seem like the route they wanted people taking, because they certainly weren't advertising it. Godot was simple. You just downloaded it and you run it and it works. You know, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm into. You run it. Or, yeah, you download it, you run it, and it works. Hooray! Yeah. I'm gonna try Unity once on my computer is done. Yeah, so so it's a shame. Yeah, you know, from what I understand, Unity is also doing ECS. Uh, I think they recently switched over to that sort of a model. And that is a model that I'm more interested in than the sort of a, the scene thing that Godot is doing. Uh, what I find inter so Bevy to me has made a lot of really interesting choices looking at kind of the Rust ecosystem for game libraries that exist. Uh, it's using uh, let's hear, let's just pull it, let's just pull it back up again, right? Covered it earlier, but yeah, you know, don't hurt. It's um, let's see. So yeah, they're using WGPURS, which from what I understand, the goal of this is to be able to work in Wasm. So you can ship it to a browser. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, they're using this math library, they're using WinIt, which is good now because it allows you to, you know, use physical sizes as opposed to the logical pixels. And, uh, you know, the Spear V Reflect stuff always, always seemed pretty neat. All right, Rob, a reflection API in Rust for the for the shader bike code. That's pretty cool. Let's see, it was pretty nice, although when I used it, I wasn't really able to get some of the built-in post-processing working. Yeah, there's a, there's a, seems like that's a, there's some very fiddly stuff. Uh, I know I was trying a very particular style of thing. Trying to basically pretend like I had a 2D game, although everything was really 3D. And, uh, oh man, the artifacting I was getting. 
And I think that it was principally caused by the lack of control Godot gave me over the camera. Uh, specifically, uh, so as opposed to changing the, you know, how the camera worked itself, I, I was trying to, like, I know, I'll scale the, what was it, the Y and the Z axes by the square root of 2, and that will get me what I want, and it did, unless I move the camera around. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if I have, a you know, better access to controlling camera stuff, I felt like it would have been better. Anyways, let's, let's, let's put some pretty stuff up. Let's make it pretty. Some pretty things. All right. We're gonna... We're gonna go ahead, I guess. We're gonna do, like, a, what, a setup. And this right here is where the uh, dependency injection that I've been talking about comes into play, right? We're gonna say I want a mutable commands object here. And I want the asset server. So, right now I said before, I was doing serialization myself with RON files using CERG. But what I think I want to do is look into this asset server and see if I can't get that to load my data. Uh, you could have just used the 2D rendering though, right? No, because I am a terrible artist. So I want, so I want real 3D stuff to help me out with lighting. Basically, and I was getting some really interesting results. It uh, it was it was looking pretty great. Uh, let's see if I still have. No, I don't think I. Unless it's in my backups somewhere. Unless it's in my backups. Let's see. I'll peruse. See if I can't find something. Nope. Um. I have some. I have some cool pictures. Maybe I don't have it anymore, which is a shame because like I, I, I don't know. I had some I had some really interesting looking stuff going on and known. So the the fact that I could have three D lighting, three D you know other stuff. I had shadows going with sprites. I had it was it was pretty sick, but like yeah. There was too many art. There's too much artifacting because I couldn't control the camera as well as I would like. Uh, and maybe, you know, maybe I gave up too quick. Maybe I could have like found it's an open source project, right? Maybe I could have forked it and done what I wanted to with a camera, <laughs> built it myself, that sort of thing, right? But man, I just, I don't know. Hey, what am I doing? Resizing that guy real quick. All right, yeah, let's just get back to let's go back to doing pretty things in this app though. See what we can do. Um, all right, so we're, like I said, it's kind of like dependency injection from the enterprise sort of world that I'm used to. Basically, define the function or whatever it is, right? This is the stuff that we want. All right, and now we get to use it. And this whole ECS container thing here, it's gonna make it work. Yeah, always making, yeah, always making changes to go, yeah, specifically for the, yeah, C. Well, I don't know C++, I don't, want, I don't feel like learning it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm sure it's fine. I've, I've, I have played around with it before. My biggest problem with C++ was dependency management. Which is another reason why I thought, like, Rust seems awesome. Why? Because Cargo is awesome. So I'm gonna... So we're, I'm gonna play with that. Yeah, again, I don't care much for the Oracle's decisions about the JVM lately, which affects, you know, everyone in that ecosystem between the Scala people, the Clojure people, the Java, you know, language programming people. So it's just like... That whole ecosystem to me seems like, ugh, I don't, I don't know anymore. But it still pays the bills, so there you go. Set server. Yeah. But for how long? How long will the customer actually put up 
with this sort of nonsense. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna load up assets. Marissa, PNG, right? Pretty sure that's what we got. Cheese right here, Marissa. Or one S, one S, all right. It's probably good to know. All right, we go commands. Uh, spawn, camera. Yeah, I want some of them camera 2D components. At least, at least with something like this, where I'm already kind of in the native language of the engine, right? I feel I'm al I'm already feeling like way more comfortable with like, oh, I see what you're doing there, Bevy. No, thank you. I will supply my own. Right? Like, how hard how hard could it be? Right? It's like right now I'm just doing like a spawn a 2D camera component. It's cool. What if I decide I didn't like it? What if I decided this was wrong for me and I really want to do my own thing? I just make my own. I just make my own struct. It looks just like it. I put it in there. You can basically copy paste what's there, make the tweaks that you want, put it inside of your own little module. Done. Good to go. Perfect. And I don't have to switch programming languages like between GDScript and C++. Yeah, it's all right there. It does. Oh, I. It, yeah, I. I know that it has the native scripting. I have. I have also attempted to do. Uh, what is it? Rust, uh, yeah, rust bindings. You know. But, you know, I already don't want to learn C++, so. <laughs> and C Sharp? Oh, I mean, that's just Microsoft's wannabe Java, isn't it? <laughs> I'm feel, I, I know, I've just offended somebody. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but, uh... But to be fair, Microsoft does that, all right? I think they also have something called F-sharp, which is their uh, functional programming language, which as far as I can tell, you know, it does... <laughs> well, he's very effective. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, but we're just gonna, we're gonna get some pretty stuff going here in a second. Oh, there's also there's also a fellow. You know, speaking of like the 2D and 3D thing. Yeah, Visual Basic with the C-like syntax. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, we still have this running. Hello. <laughs> what was I looking for? Yeah, I was gonna go back into our guy here. I was like, check this out. So, like, uh, Rust and Godot, right? And now there's this guy who talks about making gorgeous games with Rust and Godot, and so he has some very interesting articles here. His name is Tom Lays, and I know that he's interested, I think, in dr uh, also driving Godot via Rust, but using kind of Rust ECS technologies too. So the, so the Rust ECS, like, I think he might be using Specs, not 100% sure. Uh, I, you know. But anyways, but he had an interesting article here about doing the same exact sort of stuff that I was talking about doing for my game. His approach was different than mine, and so, you know, it's definitely worth looking at. I think he's going for an isometric viewpoint. I was not. I was trying to go for the, um, uh, the classic sort of top-down role-playing game a la Pokemon, I guess, or Zelda. Uh, camera angle where it's where you can see things you know like it's a it's a very it's a very interesting sort of projection uh let's see so what definitely some it was um yeah i don't remember it right now i'm not gonna look it up but anyway so this guy's also trying to basically do a 2d game with these 3d things and he talks about how what he was doing this is a little more on it, so we can go to his earlier topic, rendering a 2D game in 3D. So he talks about how he was he was doing all this stuff in Blender, he was exporting, like he was pre-rendering 2D assets from simple 3D models, but then he was doing all sorts of stuff in Engine to like fake decent lighting. And then like it came to him, the same sort of idea that came to me, right? Uh, why bother with all that? when I could just fake the 2D with my 3D assets. 
Right, and then we can get some uh, really nice looking light stuff going. So this uh, this Tom fellow, he, you know, he's, you know, he seems like a pretty cool guy. He's doing some cool stuff. Um, so it's very, very interesting. Yes, all right, what are we doing? Back to, back to doing the things that we're doing. All right, default. Yeah. Maybe as a bonus, I'll try to find some of those, uh... You know... Wolfie, I know I sent you some, some of those screenshots a long time ago. I'm sure you could... Maybe search through chat history or something and you could... You could find it. Email it to me or something. Or just... Use the Google Hangouts. Right? Make something happen. Assuming you're still there listening to me. Because, uh, you get busy sometimes, I know. So... It's fine. Alright, so, what are we doing? Yeah, so we did some commands, we did some sprite stuff, we did some, we did some materials. Yeah, material, materials, good, good. Alright, let's, uh, let's compile it. Did we compile it before? Nope, must not have, because we never used it. Ah, it's always good to use your systems. Oh, thank you for the follow! Was it Satan O? Satan Zero? Appreciate it very much. <laughs> All right. What am I doing? I was doing something. Yeah, Satan Zero. Sweet. Yes, I was going to add the system. Why? It's a startup system. That's what it is. Hooray! Our first startup system. I just want to add this guy on startup. It looks like add startup system. And of course I supplied in zero arguments, which is mad about. Let's say startup what? Dot system. Man, having too much fun talking. <laughs> that's that's part of the fun of streaming, I guess, right? You get to meet all sorts of new people. Alright, talk about some of the stuff and things. Yeah. Kinda go on a journey together. And there we go. Cool, so I'm pretty sure that we're using Vulcan on the back end here. Uh, you know, which, uh, man, that was a thousand lines of code. I've also played around with Rindy. I think that was a good 300 lines of code just to render uh, what, a triangle. I've also played around with, uh, man, just all, all sorts of things I've been playing around with. I was looking into the library that you know, Bevy says he was using, the one that I would have used if I were making my own engine for my game, where it's like, yeah, this is, it seems to be like the easy button for, uh, for hardware accel for modern hardware accelerated stuff these days. And it's even supposed to target the web with WASM. So just all of the flexibility, ease of use, and from what I understand, on the performance side of things, it's not terribly worse than, like, just trying to use Vulkan yourself. So, yeah, I was seeing an article where they had, you know, where they're graphing out the ease of use versus the, you know, the performance and whatnot, and it really seemed like this WGPU RS was pretty high up there, which gives me some confidence then. Recently found and used CSF ML. Was that machine learning? <laughs> CSFML. Ah, S SFML. This is like C, like so C bindings, right? Official bindings of the SF of the SFML language for the C language uh, of SFML for the C language. All right, cool. Doo -doo -ba -doo. Doo -doo -ba -doo. So what does SFML get you? I don't even know. Ah, simple and fast multimedia library. Oh, is this like SDL then, I guess, right? Because I know that, like, I see, uh, I guessed it was. I had guessed it was. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, so this looks... 
tutorials, API documentation, people are doing SFML. Yeah, similar to STL, but you think it's better, excellent. You know, there's nothing wrong with, yeah, you explore all the, all the libraries things. Looks like people are already writing all sorts of books and things about it and how to do things with it. So, that is good. I wonder what sort of hardware acceleration API it uses under the hood. Right? That's kind of, uh... It seems like OpenGL is dying in some big ways. Like, uh, it's been a few years since I've checked it, but a several years ago, it was like Apple hadn't updated their support for OpenGL for, like, over a decade. I was pretty sure they got rid of OpenGL for their, for their, like, smartphone and tablet devices completely. So you, nothing but metal there, right? So, and what's cool about things like this WGPU RS is that uh, you can back end it with DirectX 12, Vulkan, uh, Metal, all of the things. And the and the hope is that you know, kind of like the I guess the Java promise of writing it once and running it anywhere, sort of a thing. You know, it's it's always uh, a <laughs> yeah, there's always caveats to that. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, it's supposed to run your browser, man. I mean, that's, that's pretty neat. So, but yeah, SFML looks super cool. I bet lots of people are doing some great things with it. Yeah, look at that. We got our little Toho character up there. Riding her broom. I guess she's one of the few humans of the Toho universe, from what I understand. I, I know nothing about it. My friend's been going on and on about it lately. So it's like, all right, yeah, sure. I'll, uh, I'll I'll render a uh, one of these Toho girls to the to the screen. <laughs> but yeah, but Bevy was cool. Like, what is this? So this is what do we got here? Some oh, some duplicated things that we don't need anymore. All right, we can go ahead and organize our imports. Let's see. No idea what it is on it. Oh, the Tohus. From your sense, uh. A series of games in the bullet hell genre and with with had a lot of anime girl characters in it for some reason which there is a tremendous amount of fan art for yeah it's from your understand it's hard to explain i don't understand it i guess but uh yeah fun stuff fan art yes although my friend was telling me that that particular fan art is not terribly dissimilar from stuff that the guy that makes those games produces. Uh, I guess maybe the hands were a little too good, he said. <laughs> Since that guy's not, you know, famously not good at hands, he'll constantly put their their hands in sleeves or have them hold stuff, etc. Or her hands might be a little too good for to be a Toho or, original. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, lots and lots of fan art stuff for Tohu. I mean, I don't, I don't know much about it. I'm not gonna worry about it. I just know that the guy who does it, he's super cool with the fan art and people using it. Yeah. But I actually know Tohu in that case. Ah! Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of strange things. Let's see. Let's, um... See, not that one. Come back up here. Alright, so if we. What is this? So. Toho? Yeah, some was Toho, some other stuff. Brief introductions. Remixes. There's a lot of music. So I guess that the guy was super into wanting to make a, a variety of tracks for games. But, you know, he didn't want to be limited by the man or something, right? So he decided he was going to make his own indie games. So, you know, he's like this, you know, one-man developer shop, I think, maybe. Who just makes all sorts of music. <laughs> and it's heavily features these sorts of anime girls. These shrine maiden type things, etc. Right? And it's just, it's a bullet hell game for him to kind of feature his, uh, his game music. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, he's super into the fans doing uh, all sorts of stuff. 
Let's see here. Turn around for one minute. And now there are anime girls everywhere. Yes. <laughs> that's uh, that's how it works. But yeah, but hey, but hey, programmer. You said you've been turned. You've turned around for a minute. There we go. Look at that. Open up a window. You throw a Toho girl on there, right? This is Marissa, I think. You know, some hardware accelerated graphics. Seems uh, super easy to kind of extend and do what you want with. Uh, I think that... Let's see, I'm not sure what I can access to there. Let's go ahead and come back here. So, yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was taking a look at some of the code that's in uh, Bevy earlier. It seems pretty fun and good. Easy to extend and kind of do what you want with it sort of a thing. Right, so if we go over to like... What do we want? Maybe like, uh, do we want examples or what? Oh, let's check those out. Got some 2D examples, sprite sheet, extra atlases. You kind of look at these things and you're like, all right, so we got some sprite sheets. We just kind of add them in there. It seems like they got support for a wide variety of things. Uh, so this is for texture atlases, I guess, which sounds more like, ah, containing, uh, okay. <clears throat> We can generate a new texture atlas or a sprite sheet from a folder containing individual sprites. So that is pretty fun and good. Let's see, it reminds me of that one, of that one video of this guy watching anime and every time he tries to show his friend that it's completely family friendly. Yeah, it's highly questionable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a different culture out there, right? They have, uh, different ideas about, uh, some stuff and things. And it's, uh, you know, pretty fun. Yeah. I like learning about new, new things. But yeah, so we build texture atlases, do that sort of thing. And I think I was looking at the crates earlier. Alright, maybe 2D crates? Not sure. Let's, um... Over out here for a moment. Let's try a sprite crate. Yeah. So, so there's a wide variety of things in here. We got sprites and texture atlases. And, uh, let's see color materials. There's some render code up here. So see, we've got we've got shaders right here. So we see examples. With, yeah, pretty easy examples within the engine of like, oh, okay. Well, this is how the engine uses. You know, these sorts of uh, shaders and things to do stuff. Right? And then you just sort of, you know, you look through it. It's kind of interesting that they're in the same sort of source folder as the, as the Rust library code. Which, you know, that, that seems to me to be pretty good. I think that, yeah, I think we've got some stuff in here to basically compile the shaders. I'm not sure if it's going to be at compile time or runtime or what. Right, so I'm gonna asset render stuff. All I could really do now is kind of my eyes are glazing over now. It's getting to be that time, I think. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. But yeah, so you know, you want to figure out how to do stuff. Like, how do they do their sprite thing? It's kind of you figure it out. You copy paste. You make your tweaks. Get stuff going. But why might we be interested in doing that sort of thing? Uh, to hopefully have some efficient mechanisms for putting down a whole lot of tiles. Right, so whether this ends up being a 2D game, a true 2D game, right, or a 3D game. Uh, <laughs> when you woke up two hours ago. Yeah, I, that's funny, I did take a nap. <laughs> oh man, but uh... Yeah, alright. <sighs> What am I thinking about? Yeah, so they got. Oh, there's also some good stuff here. If I come into let's see community, you know, news, news. So if I go to the so if I go to the news stuff here, just went to bed at eight a.m. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could. I wish I could hang with that sort of schedule. I mean, the I'm I'm much more of a night owl myself. It kills me every time I have to wake up in the morning to go to work. All right, but uh, let's see, playable, yeah. So we, yeah, there's a there's a full game here. Pretty cool. 
we could uh, take a look at it. Here it is, running in Wasm in my browser. I got I got a little robot dude. I picked up a bullet or something. Let's see how do I shoot stuff again. Let's see, shift plus arrow, huh? Sure. So there are these things. We can move them around. Looking good. So I guess what? Shift and arrow. Ah, all right, cool. I'm not sure if there's a way for me to get that. We can, you know, rock around with a little robot, do some stuff and things. So that's pretty cool. The point, though, the important point, is that, like, wow! Let's see. Honestly, I like waking up at night, doing whatever I want, and then leaving for wherever I need to go. Rather than waking up in the morning. Going wherever I need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel ya. Yeah. Yeah. I've also got the I've also got the family to contend with though. Yeah. The girls like to see daddy. So <laughs> So either way, you know, I can't do what I want. It's fine. Let's see. But yeah, so they've got a they've got a variety of things. It's pretty cool. It was like, yeah, I wanted to go back to the to the crates to his source code. You know, he's got some simple assets in here. He kind of exports. Pretty cool. And yeah, you can see some uh, really good examples, like in his main RS here, of him like really, really setting up this application. I'm not sure how much of this maybe he should have pulled off into like, his own plugin. I think he does have his own plugin. So I don't know. Let's see. He's got some options up here, I guess. Other things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You can never sleep by ten hours. <laughs> oh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm on board with that sort of schedule if I could, if I could do it. <laughs> yeah. Too many people not like that for me to do. Mostly all the crazy people that live in my house. Alright, so... Yeah, so, you know, there's, there's, there's audio in here, rendering stuff, frame limiters, all sorts of things for us to, for us to learn from. Alright, well, it is, it is getting late-ish for me. And speaking of all the people I need to go see, or they get mad at me. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's getting to be on 10. I'm Enigmas. I've been, uh, hope, you know, hopefully we've had some fun programming today, learning some new stuff and things, getting Bevy up and going. Yeah, we've got, uh, yeah, it's, hey, we spawn a window. Yeah, we got a Tohu girl going. Sweet. So, uh, yeah, maybe next time we could play around with the cameras, we could play around with throwing some art assets in there. Yeah, we could, who knows, yeah, a little 3D model, do whatever we need to do. Uh, so we're still hanging out inside of our uh, bevy branch that, that we made. Uh, yeah, as, as we uh, determine whether, like, you know, what, what we want to do with the project, where we're going with it. You know, I'm not 100% like, yes, we're definitely going to do bevy. One, you know, uh, I still may end up, who knows, going either um, rust bindings into Godot, you know, We'll, we'll see, right? There's a uh, we're just kind of getting a project off the ground. We're learning as much as we can learn. Uh, not trying to make too many assumptions about what the best course of action is at the moment. Uh, all right, I'm trying to trying to learn and do some uh, fun stuff and things. All right, well, good night. <laughs>